pro tip don't cover your sacks of concrete with tarps from the harbor freight because otherwise you'll end up with this chalky mess but uh i mean it's not all bad it's gonna give us an event and what is that event you ask why it's the sunday six gate invitational the entry requirement for that being dig so the competitors are everybody i've got that's got dig it's these guys so uh we got some solid competition here so i bring the capra of course the still recently finished tranquish vrx 410 the venerable and tough to beat Argentum the Phoenix. And lastly, but not leastly, Lil Yellow the Ecto, who of course does have dig. So here is the course, which as some may have been able to guess is six gates. There's the line up the hill from gate one through gate two. Then make a nice left-hander, probably employing dig to do so to progress through gate three and uh, down the front side of the hill and uh, through a fairly sharp right-hander to pass through gate four. It's a full-on U-turn uh, to go from gates four to five and it's really off camber. So that one's gonna be dig for sure. Uh, it's a long sweeper uh, passing from gate 5 to gate 6, the camera kind of compressed this. So I'll toss another image on here. It, it's, a, it's a pretty decent amount of space to cover between gates 5 and 6. All of which is side hill, and then that moves on to gate 6, which is on a slope. And uh, trust me, I tried it. It's impassable from the other direction. Gate 6 is going to be a problem. We'll be running this as a best of two run format. It is not combined scores. It is the score for the best run. Uh, it's very simple scoring for this. A reverse is plus two and a rollover is plus 10. If you land on your wheels, there's no penalty. There are no gate points, meaning a perfect score for a run is zero. So no dilly dallying. Uh, we've got two runs each from four rigs, eight runs total. So. Let's get right into this. Uh, there are, there's no set time limit and there are no penalties for hitting gates. This is ski slope slalom style as the paint is not dry on my 3D printed gate markers. So I made gate markers out of, those are wires cut from insulation supports if you're putting in attic insulation and uh, some pink vinyl. So. As long as the rig goes in between the slalom gates, that counts as a cleared gate. So, that said, this has not been run. Uh, you'll, you'll note there's a bit of uh, gray tinge, the dark, dark gray tinge to a lot of the concrete. As I mentioned early on in the intro, the sacks got wet uh, the the rainwater basically soaked through the tarp and nearly ruined the bags but if we're building rock crawler obstacles uh, it doesn't have to be great Argentum winding his way up I mean that's inside the gate that counts so the reverse uh, I, I kind of decided on the fly that this was going to be a two run because in prior experience, whatever rig gets sent out to run an obstacle first is going to finish dead last. And uh, when I brought these out, uh, when I, the, the only four rigs would dig, I was like, what order am I going to run them in? And I just said, alphabetical by their names. But then is Lil Yella an L or Y? It's a it's Y, so it ran third. So that was that. Uh, I was lucky enough to have two cameras, so I could do a two camera setup here, which 
uh, definitely sped up the filming process. Fixed cam is the way to go for this because I was really trying to concentrate on driving. And as anyone watching can tell, uh, the first run of this uh, is a bit of a flounder. Uh, there's a lot of reverse being employed, which is generally not what you would be looking to see uh, in vehicles with dig, or particularly a vehicle with selectable overdrive. That was a that was a clean roll there, but uh, picks a bad line because first out on an obstacle that's not even fully dried yet. So the Phoenix got to be the perhaps unwilling guinea pig to basically find the workable lines and instead of doing it privately he got to do it on camera another clean rollover uh, in the event of flipping rollovers I think there's one rig that gets repositioned on a rollover uh, that's just force of habit. Usually when things get picked up, I pick them up and toss them back on the course. I was kind of trying to do it a little more competitively, so it was just, it was supposed to be like that. They, they got rolled over to wherever they landed. Another one onto the wheels. So... Argentum is making slow work of this because the guy wheeling Argentum doesn't know what lines to take. And that, the concrete parts are pretty grippy. I mean, it's, it's rough, but it is a bit chalky and the, the chunks of river rock are just slick. So Argentum makes it to the bottom the end is run one score 12 points for reverse 20 points for two rollovers for a total of 32 so the early benchmark is 32 we'll see what the trank wish can do on its first run i felt like on this surface early on i felt like the landmines were doing a little more than the hunks but I think that's just because in this initial climb up through the rock between gates one and two, um, it felt like the Tranquish had an easier time of it, basically. Um, as far as dig engagement goes, um, it, it, was a, it was a direct toss up between those sets of tires, that was too much gusto there. Um, it's a, a very tough performance indicator to guess on is how the rig is going to perform under dig, right? Because if you've got, if the rear is gripping too much, you won't be able to pull the front end around. And if the front isn't gripping enough, same thing. So I think the overall grip profile of the tusk and the landmine is very similar. So I think the Vanquish and the Tranquish did very similarly. Uh, they also suffer from not having the lowest centers of gravity. That was a... That was a terrible rollover right there. I mean, rolling over basically on the ground. But he's second out and still needs tuning. Untuned since its last run, of course. I mean, it just they just get put away. So it, it, the, the, those rollovers, the two rollovers that the Tranquish had, he should not have had. That's... That's the driver not knowing the vehicle or the course. But, like I say, it all, it all really comes down to wheel time. Uh, and of these four, 
the Tranquish has by far the least. So it has a ways to go. And I think the shocks definitely need some work done to get them where I want them. So not a spectacular run by the Tranquish. Eight points for four reverses, 20 points for two rollovers for a total of 28. So he's provisionally in first place, just slightly ahead of Argentum the Phoenix. And Lil Yella now coming out onto the course. So none of these rigs have seen any of these obstacles before. Uh, it's all brand new. Uh, I just pick random spots and put the flags in on what I think will be a challenging but not impossible route to turn. Lil Yella making fairly quick work. And at least on this terrain, the hunks proved to be the best dig performers. I mean, I, I, and and Lil Yella as well. I mean, let's let's give it to the rig and the. So that that was a just a very bad line from the driver, but uh, the the hunks on this surface, uh, the dig performed, I think the best. Like I could get the most performance out of dig. Once again there, that was too much gas. Should be much tighter to that inside flag, but the dig got good pivot on that side hill. Digging on side hill is tricky. Um, that reverse right there was probably a superfluous reverse. I don't think it needed it. I think if I had turned in a little more, the tire would have almost reversed there. Uh, I wouldn't have penalized there. Uh, because technically off the course but this is first run so generally first run is the is the feeler is feeling out the course to find out what's gonna happen on run two that is a a line that others sort of tried to get to but couldn't manage uh, it does put Yella up on a bit of a high approach and then a little too much gas. Thought it might land on its wheels, but rolled back out of it. So has to go at it again. Opts to go much wider out to the left, which I think is smart. It's when the tires get into the chalky bits or something gets hung up. Yeah, just trying to position. Much high, much tighter there. Gets it on the side. Oh, rather go for the reverse than risk the rollover. Makes it down to the bottom in a fairly brisk time, which uh, helps Lil Yella hop right into first place. Uh, that single rollover is good enough for a 10 point margin. Same amount of reverses, pretty much, as everybody else is doing. So we'll see how Zoidberg does at it. Uh, Zoidberg interesting among this group of four as the only rig not fitted with J-Concepts tires. He's running Pitbull, Brave, and Berserkers. He's also the only rig on 2.2s, and he is also the only rig running Brushed. He's got an, a, a, he's got an economy setup with a Hobby Wing 1080 and a Tekken HD 35 turn. But he also has something the others don't have, which is four-wheel steer. And uh, I had forgotten to turn that on. And uh, once I turn it on, it really makes this top section not as much of a problem. Making a mental note to mention something that occurred to me after I tallied up the scores after going through the video playthrough. Uh, I would say Zoidberg is the most planted of the portaled vehicles. I think that is mostly due to his stretch wheelbase because he doesn't really have the lowest center of gravity the body panels are to people who have watched previous Zoidberg videos would know are made of actual copper. It's like 26 gauge copper sheet. So 
it's not exactly the lightest body. I also, I never specified which direction the gates have to be passed through. If you want to take the two point penalty and go through a gate in reverse, you can absolutely do that. I, I kind of don't know why I didn't think to try going through, just go straight up the pipe and then just reverse through gate six. That probably could have eliminated some rollovers, but I, I genuinely didn't think about it until right now. That's another rollover that never should have happened. But uh, Zoidberg has the most flex of the four by a fair margin. So there are moments where uh, you can kind of snap roll it. It's like spinning out in a high-powered car, only the vertical form of that. Like right there, almost rolled it again. Got outside the gate. That's the long wheelbase, kind of coming back to bite him. But gets down to the bottom in a reasonable time with a reasonable score. With six points uh, for three reverses and ten points for a single rollover, giving him a total of 16, which now moves him provisionally into the lead. But now is time for the second runs, where the competitors have had the experience of doing one turn of the course, and the perhaps more valuable experience of watching the other competitors and seeing how they have chosen their lines. If you remember back to run one, uh, Argentum is already taking a, more, a much quicker and more aggressive line through gates one and two. A little hung up there, but no need for reverse. We'll just keep punching at it. That's a tough line. Let's see if Dig can manage to pull it around. Surprisingly to me, there were no rolls up in the top. Uh, the angle of that camera, because it's shooting down, doesn't really show that, that that's really a peak up there, the peak where his rear tires were just crossing. You can see it better from this angle. Uh, when uh, coming through gate two, before making the turn to go up to the peak, uh, the climb is about a foot-ish, so it, it's, a, it's a reasonably steep side hill portion, and the top fill up there is not concrete, it's packed dirt um, for kind of for drainage purposes, because otherwise the the back of that is going to try to form a lake. So at this point, Argentum has only used three small reverses to get to this point in the course. It's trying to dig around there, but dig is not working because the front tires are not getting enough traction. I can't tell if the servo is audible at any point. I, I couldn't tell. Um, I was switching back and forth between overdrives fairly frequently. I mean, if it's there, use it. And the Tusks, they love, they love that big overdrive. And as I've said, it does really help turning radius. I've also noticed that, I don't know how this would be scored in a real competition, an official one, uh, but if you quick applications jabs at the dig, 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 uh, you can make the vehicle kind of shimmy backwards, with definitely without using reverse. I don't know if rolling backwards counts as reverse. That's the, probably the luckiest uh, thing that happened to any of the competitors all day. Uh, he rolled, tried to power out of it, fell off landed on his wheels. So absolutely no penalty for that. He's coming out wide, digging here. He can stay inside the gate without a reverse and does on and off dig a couple times to get down to the bottom. And Argentum the Phoenix wraps up his second round with four reverses for eight points and no rollovers for a score of eight, which is very good. 
So the Tranquish, having watched that, knows that he's got to do something. Something real good to hope to be competitive in this. And being the vehicle with the least amount of wheel time, that's a tall order. The Tranquish is very capable, but has uh, already taken a questionable line that's very side-hilly there. And being that close up to the flags and knowing that Dig is not super great in that section, it's going to be a reverse to try to line up better to the flag. I think he should have taken a bigger reverse. I mean, a reverse is a reverse. If you put it in reverse, you're, you're paying the two points. Probably should have reversed it like into a full J turn and given a better line uh, to help approach gate four. But as I say, that passes gate four with no problem. Too wide into gate five. Should have gone out wider from gate four. Really should have gone out wider because what happened right here is he got one flag under him and then the rear wheels. So I counted it as a rollover and he got reset to the previous gate because that vehicle was stuck. The rear wheels were no, no longer touching the ground. There's another reverse. So once that stuck on the slalom flags happened, he's, he's out of the running for first place um, with two, three reverses and a rollover. He's just ahead and now he would be tied with Liliella's first round score and then there's the rollover. So at this point he's uh, oh no, that was back on his wheels. That was back on his wheels. So, he's still good. He's still in the running for a podium spot at this point. I was getting too far ahead. So that was a spoiler, y'all, because here we come into gate 16 and should have stayed on the dig, disengaged the dig and the rear end past the front end. He took the quick way down. He's now sitting and I think his same score from the first round for the moment and does not land on the wheels. Rolls off again, taking his score to a abysmal 38. It's always a shame to see uh, a rig go out for its second run and do significantly worse than the first run. I think it's overreaching. He should have just tried for a clean run with some reverses, take it real conservative. But that's not, you know, that's not how the Tranquish do. Like, if you're gonna go, go out there to, to just try to clean it up. Leave it all, leave it all on the rocks. Which he did. Manages to get through gate six, finally, after some amount of time. And as I previously mentioned, a score of 38. I mean, this course is going to need four or five reverses to get through it. It's the rollovers, obviously, that are going to kill you. So, Lil Yella coming in, silent. So quiet. Uh, I should just, uh, I think I've said this in like five videos now. I should just carve up those front fenders so that the tires, the front tires don't rub at full lock and then uh, yellow would be really quiet. But uh, the inside tire uh, gets, gets a little noisy. Dig doing quite well here. Got a tire outside the gate there. Has to throw his first reverse. Seems like a lot of people's first reverse has come right there around gate three. Trying to get it in tight enough. 
but it's really going to come down to his approach to uh, second reverse, entering gate four. Did not come down deep enough out of gate three. I think the plus side here is that I drilled holes in the concrete uh, to put the flags in. So I can uh, put flags back in the exact same spot. So I could try this six gate again, if just for myself, to see if anyone can run a better line. Rolls over onto his wheels. That's TRX4 type luck there. Because Liliella, uh, his narrowness helps, but he's not one that lands on his wheels a super lot on rollovers. He tends to roll about halfway and stop. We'll have occasion to dig there. And then down through gate six. And uh, if, if you've been paying attention at all, uh, you would note that Lil Yella used three reverses and required no rollover assistance. So he's got a score of six. Zoidberg, second run. Last on the course. He's got to try to manage this with three or fewer reverses and no rollovers. And that's going to be tough because of the four, the roll behavior of... Zoidberg is the least predictable. So far, so good. Pushed out too far, even with four-wheel steer. Another reverse at the at gate three over the top. A lot of people have reversed there. But he's doing all right. Four-wheel steer helps him through gate four. Just barely. And now he's stuck. He's nosed into gate five does not want to happen what happened to the Tranquish, so he's going to throw in a reverse again. And once again, same spot as before. Rolls right over. And Zoidberg, when he rolls, virtually never ends up on his wheels. Uh, except, well, uh, <laughs> as soon as I say that, well, I did say virtually, so... Uh, the rollover has already put him out of the running, but if he can finish this without another reverse, he will be sole holder of the bronze medal position, and he does it quite easily, a little twing of the gate on the way down, but he manages to finish with just two reverses and one rollover for a final score of 14. Uh, if he had thrown a couple reverses in there and not that rollover. Anyway, that gives fourth place off the podium to the Tranquish. He's not upset. He's never comped before, so, you know. Zoidberg, a solid third place. Uh, if we were doing cumulative scores, he'd have finished in second. I did the math. In a very close second place, Argentum the Phoenix missed first place by one reverse, which leaves our winner on the day, Lil Yellow the Ecto, with a six. I mean, a perfect score is zero, and he got a six, so he did really well. So thus ends the first Sunday Six Gate Invitational, and I hope you enjoyed that's all for now. Thanks for watching.